Today I thought I'd just come out in the shop and sit down and have an impromptu discussion with you about block planes. I don't have a script, uh, but I want to just kind of go through some things and kind of educate you on, on a few of the different types of block planes and how I came to choose the, the, the block planes that I use almost every time I'm in the shop. Now, when I started collecting hand planes, my primary source for planes was eBay or uh, yard sales or barn sales. And I'd typically find very old Stanley hand planes and block planes and fix them up. Sometimes they needed a new iron, so I would purchase a new iron, get it sharpened up and put the plane to use. Now I wish I still kept some of those old planes uh, so that I'd be able to show you. But that's what got me started down that road. A typical block plane, like this one, you can find generally at a hardware store or online. It's a basic Stanley plane that's a common model that's been around for decades. There's nothing wrong with it. It's got a lever cap that comes off. You have access to the iron. There's an adjustment back here for lateral adjustment and a depth adjustment knob. So functionally speaking, it's a great plane. And what I like most about it is that it's got an adjustable mouth. So if I take this and turn the knob and adjust the cam fitting, you can see that mouth opening, tightening up and opening up. And why would I want to do that? Well, typically you want the mouth opening to match the type of shaving that you're after on the wood. So for a very thin shaving on a, you're smoothing out the edge of a board, for example, after a table saw cut, you want a very thin shaving and you want to set the mouth pretty tight. Now the modern cousin to this plane is the newer Stanley, what they call sweetheart planes. And it's functionally about the same. The cap is, is adjusted with this lever here, adjusts the tightness. Now I have to say, when I got this plane, it was very difficult for me to remove this cap. And the reason why was the hole that they had formed was a little tight. So I had to actually file a little bit out of that lever cap hole to get it to fit around the screw in the plane. So now it works just fine. Again, you've got access to the blade. Now this is an A2 steel blade, meaning it's a little bit harder than an O1 steel blade that you would find in uh, most typical hand planes. That just means it'll hold an edge a little bit longer, but it also means it could be a little bit more difficult to sharpen. So if I take this blade out, you'll see that it's got a Norris style adjuster, meaning that it's got a pivot point in the center. And if I turn this screw, it adjusts this boss in and out as it engages the blade. This is a low angle block plane, meaning it's ideally suited for end grain, but it's perfectly suitable for general shop tasks as well. Now, to be honest, I think that Stanley really messed up when they came out with their new line of hand planes. I'm not exactly sure where they're made, uh, I'm going to assume that they're made in Asia somewhere. I just think that they had a great opportunity to come out with a fantastic high quality product. And to me, they made a lot of compromises. So honestly, they're not one of my favorite planes. Now, if you go back 100 years or 75 years or 150 years uh, and pick up one of those Stanley planes, you've got something that you can tune up and it'll last for a lifetime. Now moving on, uh, <clears throat> more modern hand planes. We've got this plane, it's a bench dog plane uh, imported by Rockler. This is made in India. It's got a bronze cap and some of the same adjustments that you would find on a Stanley plane. Now this model is called a 60 and a half, meaning two things. Number one, it's a low angle plane got a low cutting angle. And number two, it's a little bit narrower than a standard block plane. 
Now I had an antique version of a 60 and a half and I use that all the time just because it's a little bit narrower, it's a little bit easier to handle, and it's perfect for trimming tasks, smoothing the edge of the board, putting a chamfer on the edge of a board. It just became a real handy plane. We can step up now to a plane made by Veritas. This is a high-end model of theirs. They've taken some of the same design concepts and modernized it. Some people don't care for the look of these, but functionally speaking, I love it. It's a great plane. It has an adjustable mouth like some of these others. So I can loosen this front knob here and move that mouth opening in or out. So this is a great plane that I use quite often when I'm in the shop. This little guy right here is also made by Veritas. And I gotta say, I've, I've had this for over well over 10 years or so. And this thing gets used all the time. It's a nice handy size. It comes, you can order a, a leather holster for it uh, or just keep it in your apron pocket. Uh, me, I just keep it in my leather holster on my belt and it's always handy whenever I need it for a trimming task or to smooth the edge of a workpiece. It's just a really nice uh, plane to have. And it is also a low angle plane and it features a Norris style adjuster too so that as I turn this knob, moves the blade in and out. If I move it side to side, it adjusts the lateral position of the blade. This is a uh, more standard style of hand, uh, block plane by Veritas also. They also manufacture a tote and a knob to replace the brass knob on, their, on the front. And it turns it into basically a number three style smoothing plane. And as a matter of fact, you can order blades at various bevel angles to mimic the angles that you would find on a standard bench plane. So this guy has come in useful, has become useful for a lot of, a lot of things in the shop. Something a little different is this wood-bodied hand plane made in Europe, by, in Germany. High quality components, it's very flat, very true quality of steel and the blade is very good. A lot of guys love these wood body hand planes and they do just as well as a, a steel body plane, but it's just something a little different that you can consider when you're shopping around. Now up in front here, I've got a series of trimming planes. This one's a little block plane uh, made by Veritas also. It's called a squirrel tail, just like these two. Got, got a squirrel tail handle. It's just a nice size for uh, just knocking the edge off a workpiece or knocking the corners down. Uh, there's no adjustable mouth. It's just a standard plane that you adjust the, the, the blade depth on using, an, again, a Norris style adjuster. This little guy here I picked up at a yard sale or something a long, long time ago. It's an old Stanley plane. It's not as refined as some of these other ones, but I got to tell you, it, it has come in handy uh, in the shop too. It's a little difficult to adjust. It's got this little cap that comes off and there's nothing holding this blade in. It's just got these two raised bosses on the back. So when you put the lever cap on, you have to kind of get it close to where you want it by just sighting down the bottom. And then you just use a small hammer or a small mallet to adjust the depth and to adjust the lateral position. Same thing goes with these three guys. Uh, also sold by Lee Valley, same principle. There's nothing to hold that blade in or out except this screw and this machined uh, mouth on the bottom. So just like this antique plane, you're gonna sight it to adjust the depth, get it somewhat close, tighten it down with the star knob, and then if you need to, you can tap it with a hammer to adjust the depth or adjust the lateral position. This plane here is very similar in style to this one, except that it's got straight, straighter sides and it's got a squirrel tail, which just gives you a little bit more to hang on to as you're using it. This little guy here is a stepbrother to this one, the difference being it has a convex sole. I don't know if you could see that, but this is great for scooping out uh, a rounded surface or a concave surface in your workpiece. It's one of those tools you don't use a lot, but when you need it, you need it. And this has come in handy also. 
So here, you know, we have a variety of hand planes and, and it, you know, they vary in cost from the least expensive on up to this is perhaps the most expensive one here. And my opinion is, generally speaking, you get what you pay for. The more money you spend on a hand plane, you have to consider it as an investment, a lifetime investment in your shop tools. The machining's gonna be better, the engineering's gonna be better. Yeah, it's, it's still a hand plane and it's gonna do the job, but I think you'll get more enjoyment the more you can save up your pennies and, and buy a better quality planes. So, I, you know, I hope you learned something from my random ramblings today and maybe picked up something that you can use in your shop. So I encourage you to get out there, sharpen up your tools, and enjoy the process of woodworking.